My name is Rosa Kolen and today I'm presenting our study on the two-stage sacral neuromodulation procedure for the treatment of non-obstructive urinary retention. This study was a collaboration between the Erasmus Medical Center in the Netherlands and Isola Clinics also in the Netherlands. I have nothing to disclose. Non-obstructive urinary retention is avoiding disorder that affects millions of people worldwide. Patients can present with recurrent urinary tract infections, they can present with acute retention or with voiding symptoms such as hesitancy, straining to void or the feeling of incomplete bladder emptying. In case of significant phosphate residual, uh, patients are taught to perform clean intermittent self-catheterization. Sacral neuromodulation can be offered as an alternative. However, not all patients benefit from sacral neuromodulation. Therefore, a test phase pre precedes implantation of the neuromodulator. This is a challenge in clinical practice. It is not known beforehand which patients will benefit from sacral neuromodulation and which patients will not. Therefore, unnecessary test phases are conducted. This study included four research questions. First, what is the success rate of the timely test phase in patients with non-obstructive urinary retention? Secondly, which factors are predictive of a successful test phase? Thirdly, what is the long-term efficacy and patient satisfaction in patients with a successful test phase? And what is the long-term health in patients with a failed test phase? This study was a multi-center retrospective study, performed in two centers in the Netherlands. All consecutive patients with non-obstructive urinary retention who received a four-week timely test phase were included. They received this test phase between January 2009 and December 2020. All patients received a questionnaire from us between October 2020 and March 2021. The possible predictors of a successful timely test phase were identified in the literature and used in a multivariable logistic regression analysis. A successful test phase was defined as a 50% or higher reduction of uh, catheterization frequency or phosphate residual. Our cohort comprised 215 patients with non-obstructive urinary retention. Of these patients, 47% had a successful timely test phase. In women, the success rate was 62%. In men, the success rate was 22%. So, as I said before, we identified possible predictors of a successful test phase in the literature. These factors were age, a contractility of the detrusor muscle, a psychiatric disorder, orthopedic surgery in the medical history, a history of a pelvic surgery, and prostate resection in men. When we look at the analysis in women, we found a significant predictive value of age and a history of psychiatric disorder. In men, we found age also to be predictive of time lead success, and we found that a previous resection of the prostate predicts a successful timely test phase. 75% of patients with a successful timely test phase returned our questionnaire. This was on average three and a half years after their test phase. At this moment, 87% of those patients still use their sacral neuromodulation device. Most of these patients reported an improvement in their health compared to their situation before receiving sacral neuromodulation treatment. Most patients did not receive any other intervention. The most common complication was pain at the site of the lead or the implant. 42% of patients had one or more simulation parameter adjustments in the three and a half years in which they received treatment. 60% of patients with a failed timely test phase uh, responded to our questionnaire. Most of these patients did not report a change in their health. 71% of these patients performed 
CIC four or more times per day. And most patients did not receive another intervention after their timely test phase. To conclude, the overall success rate in patients with non-obstructive urinary retention in our cohort was 47%. In women, the success rate of the timely test phase was 62%, and in men, this was 22%. We identified lower age and a history of psychiatric disorder to be predictive of time lead success in women. In men, lower age and a resection of the prostate were predictive. 92% of patients with a successful test are still satisfied with their treatment three and a half years later. 84% reported an improvement of health. Most patients with a failed test report no change in their health three and a half years after their test phase.